car just down here is one of the craziest things I've ever seen. It's a Honda Civic Type R, but not just any Honda Civic Type R. This thing is all-wheel drive. Not like normal all-wheel drive either. This thing is running electric bolt-on hubs that are ring drive. I'm going to go chat to Marcus, the, uh, the creator of the setup. I'm going to find him, track him down and show you just how insane this is. Probably my favorite thing that I've seen this year at SEMA. So let's go talk to him, run through the ins and outs of it all. I can't wait to see this on the market because I'd love it in my car. I mean, you could make it a real drive, all drive, you can make a front wheel drive, all drive, or if you wanted to, you can go full electric. This basically gives you an extra 100 horsepower at the hubs. So no drivetrain loss because the electric wheels, electric motors are straight on the wheels. Let's go talk to Marcus now. All right, I'm here at SEMA 2018 and last night I was wandering around and one of the most intriguing things that I saw in my entire journey after walking about five kilometers around here was this particular stand. I'm here with Marcus from Orbis. Tell us about this. This is nuts. I've never seen anything like it. So give us a bit of a rundown. What is this? And uh, just so, tell us about it. Well, we call it the Orbis ring drive and we call it the ring drive because the rim is separated from the hub. So conventional wheels, of course, hub and rim are contiguous, in our case, separate. The advantage is, is that we increase the moment arm of the brake, so we're able to use a one pound caliper in place of what was a 12 pound caliper. And our brake rotor, because it has twice the swept away area as a conventional rotor, is actually lighter. So the rotor in this case is two pounds instead of what was 12 pounds. In the doing, we also increase, because of the swept area improvement, we reduce the temperature of the brake by roughly 40%. So we have improved braking. Secondarily, because the rotational inertia of the wheel, in this case aluminum, performs like a carbon wheel, we get the benefit of the carbon rotational inertia at the cost of aluminum. And then... So braking is one thing, but this is where the real interesting part comes in. So you've got a 50 horsepower direct drive motor. On each wheel. And a two-speed gearbox. So you can improve with this, there's no penalty in unsprung weight. So before we were talking, uh, I think we're, we, we weighed this setup versus the factory one. I looked at this motor, I thought there was no way it was going to weigh less than the factory setup. I was wrong. <laughs> well, the braking mass, the hub, all of that weight removed allowed us to mount a 31 pound brushless 50 horsepower motor, no penalty in unsprung weight. Yeah. So effectively, we've taken a front-wheel drive car and we've made it all-wheel drive. Without having any extra weight, you don't have a drive line. Right, no drive line, no, no axles, shaft, no, no diff. Axle. And it's a true bolt-on, there's no modification and in to the rest of the car. transfer cases, nothing needs to come from the front. Correct, and so, you get torque vectoring for free, basically. Okay, and that's all, uh, okay, so this is a, otherwise a factory vehicle. Yes. Um, what changes, aside from what you've aimed to bolt on here, would you need to do to make this work? Well, in truth, when you add the battery pack, you're going to increase the curb weight of the car. Yeah. However, the Honda in particular had a front wheel, a front to rear bias that was 6238. So we put the battery in the back of the car that op so we got an improved bias of, I think it was uh, roughly 57. 43. Yeah, I mean most front wheel drives have a pretty average weight balance so it probably doesn't hurt to have a little bit of extra weight down in the back when you've got another 100 horsepower to make exactly. up for it anyway. Exactly. So even though we added probably 200 pounds to the car, we improved the 0 to 60 by 0.6 seconds. At least that was Motor Trend's findings. Now that's with gearing that's built at 120 miles an hour of assist. So we can change this ratio and we could actually improve that zero to 60 times significantly. Uh, this motor is actually submersible, so it can be, there's no, it's completely impervious to dirt, water, grime, etc. This is proprietary setup for this car, so the uprights have to be customized to this particular vehicle. Right. Uh, so if we wanted to put one on our Hyundai i30, for instance, yeah. what's the process there? You'd... Well, so what we would do is we do probably a 3D scan or get a CAD file of the upright off of that car, yeah. and then we would make the upright to substitute for the factory upright, but all the other parts would be the same. Okay. Okay. So it's a simple bolt-on, you can do it in about an hour. 
the whole setup. Uh, the whole setup in an hour. Bad. And your ABS, no impact on your ABS or any of that. You no did say something about you had to change your proportioning valve because this is too efficient. You need to add a proportioning valve. Yeah. So if you don't have one, you need to add one because even with this tiny little caliper, the braking performance is so much improved over the factory. Just because of the diameter? The man. diameter. You have to have a proportioning valve. Okay. You have to dial back the pressure significantly. Okay. Um, and uh, you mentioned that there are options potentially for higher horsepower, but in this application due to the... <coughs> well, due to the shock tower placement, the largest horsepower we can get here is 50 horsepower. But the wheel's engineered for 100 horsepower per wheel. Okay, and that would bring, I mean, these cars are already around 300 horsepower. So right. you've now got a 400 horsepower car that has exactly. uh, taken you two hours to modify. And we have twice the capacity, battery capacity of a Toyota Prius. Okay. So you've got a 400 horsepower car that has the fuel economy of a Prius, and you can drive 40 miles pure electric. Uh, so in terms of emissions, you're actually improving them significantly. Now, regenerative braking? You get regen for free, it's part of the package, yeah. Okay. You get about seven to 13 percent regenerative benefit depending on uh, rates of deceleration, it's a variable. Now, obviously this is gonna mean that you have to have a, a different wheel setup because these have got uh, right. rollers and everything like that. So tell us about the wheel design itself. So in, in terms of what we offer, it's a kit. So you get the Orbis upright, motor, brake, assembly, CAM bus kit, motor controllers, and then our rim, which is the same as the factory rim, it just doesn't have the contiguous hub anymore. So you get our brake and our rotor. This weighs, the rotating mass of this is roughly 12 pounds with brake. What does a factory wheel normally weigh on one of these? Uh, well, the factory wheel on this car was 29 pounds. All right, now, I noticed that the, this is plastic. Um, it looks very similar to the factory front wheel. How does that work? Like, do you? Well, basically, we don't want uh, our hot rod electric e nitrous add on kit to look alien or like it's an, uh, an orphan technology. So, it's a really simple thing to so model from the factory front, whatever it is. And so, yeah, it's a hubcap, but it does its job. So, it creates the appearance of the conventional car when it's standing still. And then there's a seal and a cover inside that keeps debris out. But that way, at least, it looks factory when it's. So you it. you don't see all of the the billet stuff once this is all on there. You can have a solid cover where you don't see it, or you can have a Lexan clear cover. Okay. So it's really up to the owner, whatever their preference is. Very cool, and you can have that any color you want, obviously, to match your, any your front color, ones. Any uh, battery packs. Um, availability, what do you suggest, like if you were to do this, um, are, we, are we talking that we've got to go expensive Tesla routes or can you just go and hit up uh, X Chevy Volt batteries or what, what would you normally do? So it's really up to the, uh, to the builder, but your choices now are, are plentiful in ways they have never been before. You can buy refurbished Prius batteries for $2,000 and they bolt directly into the car. And so the so they rear seat, what, like underneath the rear seat? So yeah, you can go underneath the rear seat, you can go, you know, inside the boot. There are all sorts of places where you can put that battery. So in this particular instance, how much weight did the, uh, the battery packs add? Uh, the battery, in our case, we added 175 pounds. Okay. And uh, so what's that? That's about uh, 100, so it's 80 kilos. 80 kilos, yeah, yeah. Well, then we have a, a plug-in to the CAN bus, so the software is already built in. So you, you literally just route the accessory wiring harness to the CAN bus and then it's integrated through the throttle. Your ECU is, uh, I believe we've got the motor control module over there. Uh -huh. uh, it talks to the factory ECU. Yes. You don't have to retune your factory ECU at all. And yeah. the, as far as the car's concerned, it's still two wheel drive. It has right. no idea that there's extra power at the back. It just exactly. doesn't know why it's going fast. Exactly. It's just, okay, cool. And so aside from that, we've got the motor controller over there. Uh -huh. So the uh, motor wiring, the harness assembly goes here. And then each one of these controls the speed of the motor and the regen of the motor. Uh -huh. And so these act actually like electronic uh, limited slip differentials. So you don't need mechanical limited slip. It happens automatically in here. Yeah. And then from here, we port this to the CAN bus. Okay. And uh, the batteries obviously jump onto Precisely. one of yeah. those. Yeah. That's incredible. And uh, how, what's the effect on driving? Does it, is there any extra noise because it's got the, the gearing at the back? <clears throat> there is a little extra noise, and, uh, and, uh, but it, is, it, it gives the car a, 
incredibly exciting turbine sound. So when Motor Trend was testing this, uh, the sound of the car was, I think, pretty awesome, actually. Yeah. I can't wait. Sounds to, like a turbine. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I would love to, to see this in, in action. Yeah. All right, now, th this is probably not going to be the cheapest modification in the world, but 100 horsepower in any car isn't going to come cheap. What are you talking about price-wise? So, uh, sans battery, battery not included, the kit, two-wheel drive, add-on is 9,995 US. And uh, that's a retail price? Yeah, that's a retail yep. price, so all in, yeah. And by the time, like, is that installed or do you have to get someone to install it or is it a fairly simple process? Uh, simple mechanical tools, you can do the install, any, do it yourself or can do it in about an hour. Okay, cool, so about 10 grand, get it for you, and I think you said a refurb battery pack's about two? About two to three grand, depending on how much capacity you want. 12 yeah. grand for an extra 100 horsepower yeah. and hybrid, and you're gonna start saving fuel. Right. So it's gonna pay for itself over time. The good news is you're not altering the emissions. So in states where we are, California for example, can't touch it. So, so this, this is gives completely you legal. Yeah, gives you 100 horsepower, reduces emissions, increases fuel economy. So it's a simple way to get 100 horsepower added to essentially any car. Thank you so much for taking the time to explain that to us. And uh, so far, <laughs> this has been the most interesting stand I've seen here at SEMA. Right, so thank you very much. All right. Have a good you. rest of your weekend. Thank you. See you, mate.